Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Okay, so... I think we should talk about that time that I got arrested. <laughs> we'll talk about it because there are certain individuals out there who think that uh, finding my mugshot and bringing it up is like some kind of own against me or something, and it's not. And so I might as well talk about it, right, since it's out there. The mugshot is out there for everyone to see. Uh, my identity isn't exactly a secret. You know, this might be shocking to some of you who may be new to my channel or to my content, but I have been doxxed since 2018. So it's been several years now. Like, you, you know, you can very easily find my name, my identity. It's not hard. And then you could very quickly find my mugshot. But there are people that sneed about me and dislike me and my content, my work, the things that I talk about, certain organizations that are not going to name. <laughs> but it's not just that. It's regular haters, too. The people that hate watch me and all of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it. So the... <laughs> The time that I was arrested is from, I think I was in my early 20s. I might have been 23. I might have been a little younger than that. But like, um, as you all know, if you're familiar with my channel and like my life, I've talked about my life. I had a, a an abusive childhood, for, just for people who don't know. An alcoholic, narcissistic mother who threw me into the street when I was 17 years old and stole my identity. And I was literally, like, living out of a suitcase. And so I had to, like, survive and all of that. And I went through some very hard times. And, um, you know, it, like, I was always, like, a hard worker. I always had a job and all of that, like, since I was 14 years old. But I did not always have, uh, like, I didn't care about myself, if that makes sense. You know, I was just sort of, like, a miserable, very sad and anxious person. Like, I was high-functioning at work and all of that. And then there was the other part of me that was, like, super depressed and super sad. So I would do drugs and stuff, like, pretty much every single day. And mind you guys... This is South Florida. It's West Palm Beach. I think what I was doing is pretty mild compared to some of my compatriots. So, you know, I would get like high all the time. I did all kinds of different drugs. I did cocaine, ecstasy, and then um, when I, I was like, you know, in my early 20s, then I started getting, you know, getting into pain pills and stuff like that and you become like very quickly physically addicted to them and they're pretty expensive too so like at that time I don't know if I I think I know I had I was just I think starting to develop like a physical dependency on them so my life was not totally together it was like for eight hours of the day <laughs> for when I had to work. And then the rest of my life was just like chaos. And it was literally just like me trying to like escape having to feel anything or whatever, just getting like going home and getting high. So I was on my way to like meet my dealer who was going to front me more Roxy's or something. And I'm like in my car. And of course, like, I was a loser at that time, you know, um, and I had like an expired tag or something. I don't remember even what it was, but I know I got pulled over and uh, like I looked like absolute garbage because I think I was already in like physical withdrawal, which is why I was going to meet with my dealer anyways. And um, like I got pulled over, they arrested me and like they were going through my car and they opened up like my trunk and I had I had straws and like razor blades in the trunk of the car but 
because I was such a fucking loser and a bum. I had all this other shit like piled up on top of it. I had like clothes. I had books. I had tons of books because books were literally like the only thing I cared about. Even if I was living out of a fucking suitcase or something, I could have like two pairs of clothes, a pair of shoes, but like I wanted my fucking books, you know? Some of them were like old and they were like classics, you know? Like Dostoevsky. I'm not gonna lose that. So I had all this crap in the trunk and like, so they had searched the vehicle and then they opened the trunk and <laughs> they took one look in there and they were just like, whatever. <laughs> like they, they didn't bother to look, thank God. So this did not turn into like me being charged with any kind of like drug paraphernalia or anything like that. But they they arrested me and they took me in and uh, it was for driving on the expired tag or whatever. And while I was like being booked and processed, they were asking me questions like, do you know any like ecstasy dealers or heroin dealers? And I was like, no <laughs> what i just like didn't talk to them because i wasn't stupid you know like i was stupid but i wasn't that stupid <laughs> so i did not like i didn't say anything but i thought it was it was so weird because the way that they were talking to me made me feel like they knew something about me and like my drug use or whatever and i was like what the f i thought maybe they had those like stingray devices where they surreptitiously and illegally obtained like my records or something like my phone records or like text messages and I was like oh my god maybe they knew like I was on my way to like meet with a dealer or something but I, I just didn't say anything because like I'm not dumb but that, knowing like the Florida police that wouldn't surprise me anyways but I remember them asking me questions like that and then I think they asked me something about um my brother-in-law and they were asking me about him i don't remember what it was but like i probably shouldn't say this maybe well i won't say it never mind but anyways they were asking me things about people and uh, they were asking me about some like some bar where like people used to deal drugs and stuff and i just like didn't say anything at all and i was just like whatever so I, I remember all of that and I had to spend the night in jail and I had to get picked up the next morning <laughs> by my boyfriend and uh like I remember getting my little phone call and being like yep this happened and he's like what were you doing and I was like I was you know going to meet up with this person that he knew was the drug dealer but I obviously didn't want to say that over a fucking prison phone call and then yeah so I looked horrible. I looked like crap. It is what it is, guys. Like, I've never lied about my my past. I've been very, very open about it. In fact, you can go look at some of my older videos. I talk about, like, addiction and overcoming that. And I've interviewed many people who've gone through the same thing. Um, but yeah, it, this it's, like, not an own I don't care. You do not bother me by like bringing up my fucking mugshot from when I was young and I had, oh, I was like in at the bottom, you know, I started out at the bottom. You get thrown out of your house as a freaking teenager and your identity is stolen and you have nobody, nowhere to go, no support system. I did what I had to do to survive. You know, I was a fighter. I'm a strong, tough, resilient person. And, um, I don't regret any of those experiences at all. I had a gun held to my head when I was in the backseat of a car buying cocaine from some <laughs> some guy. Like, it does not, it doesn't phase me. This doesn't embarrass me. All of these things were like learning experiences and they just like make you stronger. And um, I'm sure other people can relate to it. Like, yeah, I'm a normal person. I'm not perfect, but I think it is kind of funny when people arrogantly assume that, oh, like bringing that up or posting it online or whatever, or talking about it is an own to me in any way. It isn't. You don't embarrass me. Like you're, you don't upset me. It doesn't matter to me. If anything, I've been through things <laughs> that maybe other people haven't and maybe that has given me a level of humility that other people don't have or whatever 
But anyways, that's literally the story. I never got arrested for doing any of the horrible things that I did, you know? And I, it was an expired tag on my car and I spent one night in jail. Ooh, she broke the law. Ooh, she's a bad girl. She's a naughty girl. Yeah, I had a really hard life and I couldn't afford things sometimes like I've overcome poverty and like homelessness and drug addiction. Ooh, you really got me there, didn't you? You know, what is funny though is that I never got arrested for buying or selling drugs. I never got arrested for <laughs> other things. I like, I would get high and I would go into high end stores and shoplift just for like the thrill of it. I did like crazy stuff like that and I never got caught and I never got arrested for it. And I have no shame in talking about the kind of person that I used to be before I had Christ and before I'm in the person I am now, you know, like nobody's perfect. It is what it is, but it doesn't bother me. The picture is out there. The arrest record is out there. I drove on expired tags. I got arrested in South Florida. Who, you know, when I was a young lady, oh my gosh, how, how embarrassing, how devastating.